We want students to know that if they go to Kent State, they have the world a la carte as an opportunity for them to develop a true global perspective. The doctor's like, you had a massive burn on your eye. And Mason says, is there any chance that that was already there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's not, Mason. <laughs> Imagine that guy's day. Ima- you're an ophthalmologist. You spend your whole fucking life being like, here's some glasses, here's some surgery. Oh, you're Tim. It sucks to be you. And then this asshole walks in and he's like, so what do you think that burn in the back of my eyes is from? And you're not allowed to punch him in the balls. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because somebody had dibs on all the good stuff. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you doing this fine afternoon, sir? Fantastic, Noah. Good. Energized. Feeling <laughs> oh, no. Full. More energy than I've ever had. <laughs> oh, no. I'm terrified. I haven't slept for 26 years. Oh, nice. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also joining us this week is skeptic extraordinaire Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back. I have not eaten today, and you can't prove otherwise, guys. Oh, no, right on. I've had nothing. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Uh, we watched Eat the Sun, which is a documentary about how you can live entirely without food and you can achieve peak health via the tried and trusted medium of retinal scorching, yep. I think is what they're going for. <laughs> yeah. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the absolute batshit claims that make you never want to attend a meditation class again, but you've been trying to slowly drive Marsh insane with (laughs) crazier and crazier documentaries over the last year and a half, you (laughs) will love this movie. To be clear, and I know we're going to talk about it for however long this episode goes, this is You Can Too Stare Into the Sun the movie. The movie. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's just asking questions, Eli. It's, but can you just stare into the sun? The movie. <laughs> now, I, I have to ask, because I know that our friend Eli got suckered into an awful lot of woo in his youth. Did you ever try to photosynthesize? No. Okay. No. Right. I mean, I did try quite a bit of fasting and was told that sunbathing made it easier mm-hmm. and definitely fell for that what i'm saying is <laughs> as with everything stupid we ever talk about i was two conversations away from being <laughs> in this movie uh well so, but there's a, the reason eli that i thought to ask that question is because so did i i just exactly the same thing it's just like oh yeah no you do a seven day fast but if you sit out in the sun <laughs> all that vitamin d well we come at this from very different angles <laughs> we have been on very different journeys in our lives <laughs> oh dude i used to know a guy who claimed to be he didn't stare into the sun but he claimed that he never ate he called himself a breatharian oh yeah no, i've i've interviewed breatharians before i think yes. the second ever be reasonable was a breatharian and she hadn't been doing it very long and i knew that because she wasn't dead <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't a liar and she was still alive which means she was new to this <laughs> oh there you go so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at uh i've got to say best worst movie name okay it's eat the sun this is i think this may be the silliest possible imaginable three word combination phrase because you've got eat as an opener and that is a silly opener the kind of the imperative Mm -hmm. eat good solid silly opener and then to follow that with a definite article so not not eat some stuff not eat a thing eat v (laughs) that's already pretty good and then to end that sentence that three word sentence with the giant ball of nuclear fire at the center of our existence <laughs> is just elite level stupid. Eat the sun. There's no Perfect. way to finish that sentence but rich without it being stupid. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so I was going to go with, because again, this is all about people who say that they stare into the sun and they never eat. Now, we know that people who say they never eat are just fucking liars that just don't eat around people. People who say they stare into the sun are also fucking liars because that's really painful to do. So over and over again, this documentarian has to take these people out and make them actually stare into the sun for the video. (laughs) And it's super obvious every time that they don't actually ever do this shit. Yeah, yeah. 
they claim is called sun gazing. It's called sun squinting. It's yeah. definitely yeah. sun squinting at best. Mm-hmm. Sun blinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My favorite crazy person who barely pretends to do this just plays the French horn near the sun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's brilliant. Uh, I'm going to go with best worst excuse. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this documentary is almost on our side. It's not, but it's almost on our side. And when it will reveal the insanity of one of its subjects, it is... I'm going to say top four funniest things that has ever happened yes. in a thing we have watched. Yes. Yeah, 100%. I'm absolutely going to agree with you on that one. So with that teased and a lot of crazy on the other side of the break, we're going to need a minute to level up. But don't worry, we're going to be back in a hurry with all the ridiculous bullshit that is Eat the Sun. And there's really no way to get the refund on the camera equipment. No, man. They said all sales are final. Ah, bummer. Total bummer. Like, I don't, I don't even have anything to make a documentary about now. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, Mason. Uh, bad news. We, we aren't going to need you to DP for the documentary after all. The subject fell through. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but hey, while you guys got a second, you know how my lifelong dreams were shattered last year? Um, yeah. Right, 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 right. Well... The good news is I discovered an ancient magic that means I'm going to live forever and unlock the secrets of the universe right after. You, um, you, you did? I sure did. I built a website to talk about it. I talk about it constantly, and I am doing the opposite of pretty much every medical expert I have talked to. Oh. Right. Well, I'm going to go stare into the sun because, hey... If sun gazing is not the secret to the universe, I don't, I don't know what I'll do. Am I right? Wow. Mason seems really messed up. Yeah. I mean, do you think we should get him some help or like talk to his family or something? Yeah, I mean, we could do that. Or we could film it. You want to film our friend's very obvious mental breakdown? I, I mean, I'm just searching for the truth, man. Right, but the truth about what? Like, remind me, what is it that Mason's into? Um, it's um. Did he mention? Look, look, look. look you you want to waste this camera money or not? All right, let's go film our friend's breakdown. Feels nice to know a universal secret. Oh you, no, we know it does, buddy. We know. Great timing for me. oh boy that sketch sure was fun it sure was you know we're gonna have a lot of fun today but before we dive into just what happens when a lack of mental health care meets con men and the anonymous internet we thought we'd remind you about our first sponsor this week better help what's better help BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Plus, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and financial aid is available. Which means you can talk to someone about your issues without burning out the center of your eyeballs. That's right, and right now, God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month of BetterHelp at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful better help sometimes it's either that or you end up on be reasonable hey not everyone i talk to is mentally ill some of them are liars no that's true yeah sometimes it's both sometimes it's both mm-hmm. and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up on a quote from through the looking glass that basically amounts to how about believing in nonsense huh have you ever thought of that <laughs> <laughs> quotes from a unicorn to start your documentary not a great sign. Yeah. Right, exactly. Not a great sign. Because this is the quote about the unicorn asking you to believe in him. But the thing is, if a unicorn asked me to believe in it, I obviously would. Right. But this movie will be a third party asking me to believe in unicorns, <laughs> which is a very different thing. Quite a bit, yeah. And we start, so we're going to have two different types of talking heads in this movie. The first is just nutters and liars, mostly liars. <laughs> the other is 
these poor actual scientists that get in there for like two fucking sentences and have no idea what they've just lent themselves to. Yeah. Oh, and we've got a great one in this movie, by the way. It's not this first guy. This first guy, I, I have my money on. I had no fucking idea what this movie was, but mm. there will be a lady later who's so excited to share her facts about sunscreen. It breaks your goddamn heart. Yeah, oh, she's the best. She's the <laughs> oh, no, star she's, of this fucking movie. She's brilliant. Yeah. I, I call that game the, uh, the crazy or court mind thing. So, well, this guy guys come up he's got a professorial title is he crazy or is he quote mind let's play yeah exactly and he was quote mind in this instance i do believe but he just comes on and he's like hey you know i'm an expert in the sun um tanning is super fucking weird isn't it that's a dumb thing to do why the hell do people do that <laughs> yeah he said it's the craziest thing he's ever heard that people do with the sun and this movie is like yeah hold my sunblock <laughs> we can, we're gonna beat that truly i also want to point out just looking at this guy it's always nice to see what santa claus get, is doing when he's not miracling on 34th street right <laughs> or making dinosaurs yeah. <laughs> yeah very important also just a quick note on these title cards which will come up throughout the movie all of these title cards appear to be actual scans, pictures, or reconstructions of these people's business cards because yep. they share, among other things, everyone's phone number and address. Yes. Yeah, email and where their work is. Yep. Yeah, like I'm sure nothing bad has ever come of doxing every one of your talking heads <gasps> throughout. Wow. You know who I would not want to share my personal information? <laughs> the Gaia Network, the only available venue for this fucking movie. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So then we're going to meet the star of our movie. This is Mason. This is a man that just exudes stupid even before he says, so yeah, I stare into the sun as the main element of my personality. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> if I could screenshot this dude's face as he stares at the sun, you would have no doubt that he is not in good mental health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, all the footage we see of him standing, staring at the sun, it all looks like it's from some sort of nuclear war information film from the 80s, which yes. was really weirdly off-putting. Right. No, it all looks like some kind of Reagan-era invasion footage that they just uncovered or some shit. But yeah, so he, we're going to watch him stare into the sun. Don't worry. There'll be plenty more of that. And this is also where we're going to introduce the HRM sun gazing protocol. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is, and I quote, Stand barefoot on bare earth, add 10 seconds daily until you reach 44 minutes. Now, notice it does not say stare into the sun at any point on that. I'm wondering if that's like a legal thing, <laughs> right? Like that they were legally like, okay. It'd be amazing can... if they've all just, everyone just misinterpreted the advice all this time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they haven't because we will meet HRM and he's not saying, why are you guys staring at the sun? He's very right, much on yeah, board exactly. with it, but still. <laughs> and he takes dumb vegan argument to the next level here, which I love because like, I'm a vegan and a lot of the time people will be like, hey, you believe this crazy stupid thing too? And I'm like, oh no, I just eat the cheesy <laughs> poofs that come in the different package. But at one point he's like, cows eat grass. Grass is a more direct form of energy. And I was like, oh, that's bad thinking. And then he was like, but an even more direct form yes. of energy is the sun. The yeah. grass is eating the sun. It's it's brilliant. He says, yeah, just just cut out the middleman on energy. He's like, yeah, mate, those cows and pigs are really taking advantage of you as the middleman <laughs> there. They're adding such a markup on, on that energy. But then he asks, and what would happen if you just eat the sun? And the thing is, there is an answer to that question, but the answer is radically different to what he thinks the answer oh, is. If we could just give him a spoonful of coronal mass injection <laughs> or something, that would solve so many problems. Also, I, I just I, I have to point this out because just gives you an idea how lazy HRM is. He says, you know, why 44 minutes? Well, nobody really knows. I'm like, numerology is the easiest possible thing. And you guys <laughs> didn't bother coming up with something? Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> lazy fucks. What was HRM doing? Because we will learn that that's a person in a second. What mm -hmm. was HRM doing the first time someone was like, and what should we build up to? And he was like, 44 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Sounds real. Yeah. I think what it was, it, the, the bigger question is, what was he planning to do 44 minutes after, after someone asked him that question, which is why it's 44 <laughs> minutes long. Okay. Like he looks at his watch, he's like, well... There's, I've got a, a show to get to in 44 minutes. So yeah, you need exactly 44 minutes it's and no the, more than that. I've got, a, I've got a, an appointment at my local curry house I need to get to, a reservation. I've got a photography that I have a photography session. I have to do. All right. And then we get Marsha's Best Worst. We get the title. And then we meet Hiro Rotan Manek, HRM, 
who we first see walking into his sacred space healing center business. So, yeah, he can fuck himself all the way. <laughs> He's very clearly everyone has this like vitamin shop slash yoga studio slash birthing center slash, mm -hmm. you know, acupuncturist in their town. And this guy's just making the rounds, <laughs> telling yep. people not to eat food. Oh, God. He's got like a wizard's beard, but for sideburns. Yeah, and he's he's like the, the Simpsons monorail guy for the sun in that he just goes from town to town encouraging people to look at the sun until he basically gets rumbled and then he fucks off to another country and does the same thing because yep. he, he had a following in India and I don't know what happened to that, but he's in America by this point. Yeah, someone probably followed him, found him at a restaurant, I'm going to guess. <laughs> and there's, there's a great line from Mason as well, was he, he got into this because he saw on a flyer that your brain can be like a solar battery. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, yeah, but from what we've seen of Mason, it's more like a watch battery than a car battery, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we get some clips of HRM at, at a few conferences. He's given his pitch, which is that he doesn't eat food. <laughs> right. He doesn't he doesn't remember exactly when he stopped eating solid food, but it's been yeah. a long time. He says, I can't say exactly when I stopped eating solid food. You know what, mate? I can. It was the 12th of March, 2022, when you died. HRM died oh, a Jesus fortnight ago. Christ. Wow. <laughs> look at this. Yeah, I looked him up because I thought, I wonder if this guy is still alive and whether he's able to to answer an email to me and get on Be Reasonable. And he died like two or three weeks ago, 12th oh. of March. I can't believe he died early, too early for me to interview him, especially when we see his business card flash up on screen and I've got all of his email addresses and everything. Right, I emailed yeah, and his them. phone number and his home yeah, address. Yeah, I emailed they all back. There's nobody picking up his work from there. So if you think about it, this is the memorial episode. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Because the good thing about them doxing every one of the guests is I was just making notes for be reasonable. So, oh, <laughs> right. might be fun to invite, but so many of these just bounce now. So many of these people just did their emails bounce. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. So yeah, but he claims he hasn't eaten since 1995. He also says it's a recorded fact. Like, how the fuck would that be required? What he means is an unsubstantiated claim that he refuses to allow skeptics to test. But that's a different use of recorded fact that you and I are used to, probably. Yeah. He's also, he, as well as that, he makes a subtle shift to the claims that he's making. Because he starts by saying, I don't eat food. And then he very quickly starts saying, I don't eat solid food. And that emphasis on solid is pretty important. Because yeah. if I wasn't eating anything at all... I just say food, but to emphasize solid, that's a qualifier. Right. No, you could technically subsist on a liquid diet. Sure. Yeah. Like some people yeah. have to do that medically. Yeah. And, and it, as he will repeat, this guy's like not good at repeating his lines. He does them very rote and very bored. He's like, I haven't eaten for 444 days. I only subsist on coffee, tea and buttermilk. I only eat for 44 days. Like someone tortured the script into him <laughs> in an <laughs> underground center. So I, I can only imagine that's because he's been telling the same lie for so long. I think he's getting bored of the fact that people aren't finding out that he's bullshitting them. And so he's just think, thinking, how obvious can I make this right, and still yeah. get away with this by this point? That's the only, the only enjoyment he's got left in it. Do I have to have my heart in it at all? No, I get it. Like, there would be days at the toy store when I'd be like, come on, guys, check it out. It's the magic thumbs. You can use the yep. I was just yep. sort of like half, half assing it. It's like that, except you don't get to break for lunch. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, and then we cut to psychiatrist Maury Pressman, who will pseudo corroborate HRM's claims. This is amazing. This guy, Maury Pressman, claims to have met a guy who claimed to have studied HRM for a year under, quote, very rigid conditions. <laughs> Mm. That's the closest they come to confirming his claims in the entire movie. <laughs> I do want to say, though, if this is an actual reproduction of Maury Pressman's business card, it's nice that the logo on it really warns you he has no fucking idea what he's talking about. It's like <laughs> two snakes fucking in front of a pyramid with the eye of Horus. <laughs> oh, we also have this deceptively edited doctor from Mumbai. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> This is Sudith Shah, isn't it? Yes. Where he says, I thought it sounded weird that someone was claiming to do that. Immediate hard cut as soon as yes. he finishes saying that. <laughs> yes. He's like, yeah, no, we tested him for over a year. And then he starts describing like monthly tests, right? Because HRM is sort of trying to convince you that he was in a hospital, locked down doctors around him the whole time so that they could make sure that he wasn't getting food. What they're talking about is he went in for an MRI once a month. Yeah, right. That's what the doctor's talking about, but they very deceptively edit it so that those claims all sort of bleed together. Right. 
And at one point, he's like, he has a slightly enlarged pineal gland. And I feel like this doctor does not know what he was being interviewed for. Because oh, yeah. the movie is very clearly like, that's what he's eating with. His son <laughs> eating pineal gland. Was the doctor his, himself, the doctor's sort of saying, yeah, he had a big pineal gland. We don't really know why or what it would mean. And I am very specifically not going to say anything concrete about it. So you can't think that I'm on your side. Cut. Cut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then we cut to, we're at this community center, just filled with background noise. And Mason, the newer sun gazer, he's given out his sun gazing website business card to just random people who are trying to, you know, swim or something. <laughs> we're watching him ray comfort people about sun gazing. Yep. And by the way, the introductory sentence we will see of his pitch is, all I wanted was for someone to tell me, um... It's going to be okay. And I was like, wow, fucking dark, my guy. <laughs> also, I know this is a weird thing to note, but his shorts are way too high up and it's weird. It's like he's holding them up with his ass cheeks or something. It's very weird. <laughs> shorts are high. He's wearing a backwards baseball cap. Yeah. It's like an adult is playing a little kid in an anti-bullying presentation. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, God. Okay. So then we, we get our first real shot of him staring into the sun for like a prolonged period of time. Mm -hmm. And it is super duper fucking clear that he doesn't actually do this at all when the cameras aren't rolling. And he really wishes that the cameras would fucking leave. He is in so goddamn much pain through this entire bit. Oh, it's amazing. But you know, the only person worse at pretending to stare into the sun than him HRM himself, the oh, guy yeah. who is barely facing the sun and like checks his watch every 14 <laughs> seconds. Yep. And for a documentary, footage of two men standing silent and motionless looking out at the sun is not searing documentary <laughs> material. <laughs> no, as it it's, turns out. It's not hugely exciting. He's also like talking to people there as well. And he's impressing them by saying that he's able to look at the sun for 37 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm from the UK. If we get 37 minutes of sunlight per day, it technically qualifies as a weather anomaly. So <laughs> I would be impressed <laughs> about him being able to look at the sun for 37 minutes. That's the best and safest place to pitch sun gazing. Like, yeah, no, we just have to work up to 44 minutes. And it's like, oh, all right, <laughs> no danger. But there's a lovely line from Mason as well, where he says, you know, I I'm doing this so far. Who knows where I'll be in the future? So, well, you'll definitely not still be at stargazing.com because I checked and that, that oh, website's well, gone now. So yeah. That's oh. a little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> this is also the first scene where Mason laughs. And I'm going to put really heavy air quotes around the words laugh because he says that sentence and then he's like ha 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 I just wrote in my notes ha 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 I am well yeah <laughs> yeah so oh, then we cut back to Maury Pressman so he can go like who the fuck the ophthalmologists know about eyes though right so <laughs> this is my paraphrase of what the man says here is he's, he's like you know some people say that these guys claims are impossible but if you accept their claims without evidence, those people have to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I I think his point genuinely was nobody says you can't stare at the sun. They say you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, oh, Then we cut back to Mason's sun staring. And honestly, I could watch that all fucking day. Yeah, oh, right. That's pretty great. This is where he meets the women as well. Yes, isn't he? yes. He has, like, some people on top of the mountain. And he says to them, I haven't eaten since September the 11th. And it feels like that's the kind of date where you always have to include the year. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to really confuse people. And those, those hiking women are really confused by that. Yeah. So he's out, he's in L.A. He's up on the path or whatever, staring out at the sun and shit. And apparently, like, three tourists wander by. And the producer of the documentary is like, hey, Mason, you want to tell these people about what you were doing? And it's amazing because we get to watch them all realize. And we get to watch this over and over again in this movie. We get to watch them all realize together that he's a fucking crazy person. And they wish that he, they hadn't asked what he was doing. <laughs> right? They all give this like, oh, anyway, kind of nod all together. Oh, uh, we have to go. This is just our morning fun thing we do at the coffee shop. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> so then we so we go back to September 10th, right? We go back to right back when he was eating food, if you can imagine that. And we relive the beginning of his journey via his blog posts. Mm. Yeah. He starts off, I haven't eaten in 10 days. And I'm like, okay, you're a fucking liar. <laughs> yep. Right? That's what we know now. Also, he said that September 10th and he stopped eating on September 11th. It did, the days don't add up either. 
but he's talking about how he skipped, he's going to skip Thanksgiving this year because everybody will want him to eat food. Oh, oh. It's, so, it's so grim. He's, he, he's skipping Thanksgiving because he's finally going to get all pissy about the whole deciding to stop eating completely thing. Yes, oh. right. Yeah. Then we meet Mason's girlfriend. It's like the Bible. She has no name, just a relationship to a man. <laughs> <laughs> also, the movie will call her Mason's girlfriend. She very clearly is ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> no, she ends this little interview by going like, by the end of the relationship, he was a real asshole about all this sun-staring <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. yeah. All of his family talk about how judgmental he became about the whole sun thing, which is great. But they also talk about how his backstory... This was really obvious to me. Surely this was obvious to everyone watching, right? That his backstory is he was a really massively competitive ski jumper who all he cared about his entire life was getting to the Olympics. And I thought, right, if we pause the movie here, we know two facts about Mason. One is that he never got to be Olympic level at the thing he dedicated his entire life to. And now two, he subsequently decided that human beings don't need food to survive. I think we've got all the pieces we need to understand Mason at this point. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, his best friend's like, well, yeah, after he failed to get into the Olympics, his goal became looking at something since you can't really fail at that, right? You can't <laughs> yeah. not... Yeah, that. He, he made the entirely healthy decision to replace ski jumping with starvation. Absolutely yeah, fine. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like people do when they're mentally healthy. Yeah. When they introduced the girlfriend, I wrote in my notes, OK, this is officially a horror movie now. And she is the protagonist. <laughs> but no, she she got out. She got yeah, out. Yeah, she escaped, <laughs> which is it makes me feel better about the entire movie. Yeah. But yeah, but apparently when she broke up with him, he got so depressed, he ate food, not because he was hungry. Y'all. OK. This is my favorite reoccurring theme of the movie. Mason will never go, I got hungry and I ate food today. He'll always be like, you know, you know what it was? It was that I was at Trader Joe's and I fell with my mouth onto a hoagie. But I didn't wanna. I wasn't hungry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but we watch him be sad and alone and everything. And Ace starts talking about how he sure wishes everybody didn't hate him for being a a weird liar about shit, right? Yeah. And the, the intensity of this interview, it's its not a great sign that he's given this whole interview with all the intensity of Jordan Peterson. Yes. It, it, it is exactly as big a flag as it is with Jordan Peterson. It's the same flag. It's the same <laughs> yeah. flag in all ways. If you start to talk about your hobby slash worldview and you cry, <laughs> you should talk to a professional about yep. your hobby slash worldview. Yeah. But instead, he's like, you know, what I need is to meet... More people who are willing to reinforce my delusions and pretend as though my lies might theoretically be true. Right? <laughs> right. Oh, because he, he says about, because obviously I haven't met HRM. He said, I wasn't really convinced that we got to the core of who HRM was. And I thought, yeah, you often get that sense when you hang out with lies and con men. Yeah, <laughs> like, as it turns out. It's really out. hard to get to their core. And so instead he says, I'd really like to meet some more people who don't eat meat. People close to my own age. And I thought, is he is he looking for like a singles app for people who don't eat? Like, empty of fish or something <laughs> <laughs> oh oh and then we have this little montage of happy sun gazing yahoo groups members mm. okay here's the thing about the internet it is the worst possible place to share experiences because by definition it can be fake <laughs> right, right. i.e. One or two people listening to this podcast are unaware that No Illusion is a pseudonym. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I wrote my notes like, ah, the comment section where all good investigative journalism winds up eventually. I did love this one guy. He's like, I lost 25 pounds. I'm like, yeah, keep it up. You'll lose the rest eventually. <laughs> yeah, like most of the positive uh, testimonials here are people talking up the perceived benefits of weight loss, not about yeah. the sunshine itself. Apart from one lady who said <laughs> staring at the sun made her tits get bigger. That's got to be bullshit. She's yes. got, that's got to be a fake one. <laughs> oh, I love the pose that they accidentally capped in on. This. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, for sure. So then we had Dallas. He's going to go off and meet some other sun starers. So we meet a different liar named Julia Swanson. She's a lawyer for an auto insurance agency, a group known for their honesty, if ever there was one. <laughs> yeah. And she's reporting to us from the past? 100%. This is 1980s stock footage that she yes. somehow inserted herself into. And, and so she starts talking about how great it is to stare at the sun. And look, like I'm, I'm sure that there actually are like, meditation like benefits that you get from doing this but like 
You could get them from staring at a picture of the sun, too. Right. You know? Yes. Like, she's talking about how at the end of a very stressful work day, she'd stand on top of the roof of her building in the open air, in the sunshine, and then she was amazed that it made her feel less tired and stressed. She's describing meditation. Yes. And she also said she was doing it for five minutes, which is very different to what Mason was doing with his 44 minute goal. <laughs> She's standing in the open air for five minutes. That, that isn't sun gazing. That isn't mystical. You're just meditating, love. It's no, fine. Yeah. Love. That's just getting outside and breathing some. Well, she's yeah. in LA, so it's not fresh air, but she's breathing air. <laughs> <laughs> and unlike everyone else in this fucking movie, we do not watch her squinting into the sun. We watch her facing away from the sun, practicing her fucking French horn. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, she says, you know, I was never worried about my eyes because I trusted the website. And I'm like, oh, those are some famous last words. Yeah. I literally just wrote, do not trust the website. <laughs> but she says, I was never worried about my eyesight, which is a very bold claim for a lady wearing glasses. Like you had some concerns <laughs> at some point, I think. <laughs> well, and then and Mason's like, so what got you into sun gazing? And she's like, I saw your website dude yeah, it's like you yeah yeah and then mason said you know i felt responsible at some level like yeah in that she directly told you it was your fault yeah like, right. you should at some level you should feel responsible well you know i wrote my notes you're like mason i feel responsible for telling a woman to do something incredibly dangerous with no reasonable assurance that it was even survivable the director hold my juice cleanse right <laughs> <laughs> another thing that i fell for <laughs> pretty recently too i think i was working this job when i fell for a juice cleanse oh wow pretty, we don't need to talk about it this isn't about me nope, it's about it's mason not. let's it's laugh at mason. somebody else and okay and then we get speaking of pose right we get this unsourced email that you know technically agrees with the movie's premise and it just gets sillier and sillier and i don't think that the movie ever realizes that it's fake mm, but it has to be fake it has to be fake it has to be someone fucking with him and no one knows. Yeah. It is as though the guy is aware he's going to be on the documentary and was like, well, I'll make it really broad at the end so that it doesn't actually end in the documentary. Yeah, because the things this letter says is that, you know, they say they no longer need their parents now that they have sun gazing to take their place, which is pure serial killer energy. Yeah. And then it goes into, and also my grades are improving and they're improving so much that I'm considering dropping out. Yeah, what? You know, which is a hell of a flex. If anything, I'm too good at school is what <laughs> <laughs> and then just to be clear that this is a joke he's like i've even been doing it with my dog and he loves it except for when i stopped feeding him yes. ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. i mean it might as well be a picture of his gaped asshole at the end and mason's well, like oh i wonder what that's for the, <laughs> the end line is do you ever feel superior to the rest of the world i know i do yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right and then we're going to go meet Jason. And I love this so fucking much. Because, because the reason that we're going around and meeting other sun gazers is Mason wanted to meet somebody who's like him. And, and he hears that. Oh, here's a guy. He's about his same age. His name even rhymes with his. And he gets there. And he's like the stuffiest, shittiest Mormon. <laughs> he's a crazy yeah. Mormon. What's great is that the only thing that unites these people is their fucking craziness. He's like, oh, uh, you're a sun gazer because you want to complete to yourself. Well, I'm a sun gazer because I think the Adam and Eve story is code for the sun. And they're just like, all right. <laughs> and I love how Jason explains that he found this. How did you find, of sun, how did you hear about sun gazing? He said, I first heard of sun gazing by doing searches on the internet. So, but what were you searching for? Because if right. you were searching for sun gazing, you must have heard of it first to know to type those words in. Yeah. Well, he also like, he, he tried, he tries to explain how he knew it was true because when you read that stuff on the internet, it proves that it's not just some kooky thing you're reading about on the internet. Yeah, this isn't just the internet. It's a person on the internet. I, I don't like, think Jason knows how they're for works. <laughs> <laughs> also, just because he's a Mormon doesn't mean he's closed minded. Yeah, it does. But all, yeah. all very restrictive. Right. I don't know where. I don't know where. A lot of people think Mormons are closed minded and restrictive. Yeah, they they get that from your whole religion. Yes, thing, I'm pretty right. sure. <laughs> Well, yeah, as soon as I realized he was a Mormon, I'm like, well, okay, that's if it's at least as silly as sun gazing. And we should point out he's all the way Mormon. And by that, I mean, he has four children and a pregnant wife. Mm. Sure does. Yeah. This is also where he gives us the Adam and Eve pitch. He's like, okay, so you know the story of Adam and Eve, which I think is true. Adam and Eve fell by eating. Eating is bad. Right. They ate, what, and what were they eating? Food. Exactly. <laughs> Solid food. Solid food. Specific. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
I also love that we see him doing the sun gazing thing and he's got a stopwatch around his neck to see how long he's been doing it for. But I really want him to like squint with difficulty at the sun, the, 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 the stopwatch because he's completely blown his eyes out by staring <laughs> right. at the sun for so long. Right. So and we watch his fucking kids sun gaze with him for a second. Oh mm. God, they should come and take those children. <laughs> And then we get what is billed anyway as Mason and Jason meeting for, well, I guess not lunch, right? Yeah. There's an empty plate next to each of them. They very obviously just fucking ate. They're in a diner. They are. They're, exactly. I wanted them to just be like air eating, right? Like miming <laughs> eating as they talk. Or something. Yeah. Like why are they in a diner? They should have gone to a solarium if they really right? wanted yeah, to fill exactly. up on, on, on food. Well, but it turns out that Jason isn't a non-eater. He just stares into the sun. So he's like half ass in it. Right. He also finds a, a, a spot in the Book of the Doctrines and Covenants, one of the Mormon holy books, that says something about, if you are filled with my light, there will be no darkness in you. So that's pretty much an endorsement. That's probably yeah. telling me to stare into the sun. Yeah. And Jason also says, uh, so who knows, you know, maybe I'll come to comprehend all things. And I thought, nah, I wouldn't hold your breath, Jason. <laughs> Unless you also believe you don't need oxygen either, in which case, <laughs> go ahead, I don't know. Yeah, he ends it by being like, maybe I'm a pioneer genius. And I, just, hey, general advice podcast listener, if you're ever doing a thing and you wonder if you're a crazy person or a pioneer genius... I promise you're a crazy person. Right. I yep. promise. Maybe there's one of you out there who I just blew cold fusion, but I pr I pr I'm betting a higher percentage you're a crazy person. Yeah, and there is there is no chance Eli is not speaking from experience there. Like, you've been a pioneer of several things that you realize were just crazy, right? I didn't have a mic pointed at me at the time, so I don't know what you're talking about, Mark. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. While we were talking that uh, Mormon guy had another kid, so we need a quick break to congratulate <laughs> him. But we'll be back in a moment with even more Eat the Sun. Okay. Now, this is only going to take a second. Oh, I'm ready. Hey, guys. Whoa, whoa. Is that an MRI machine? Yep. We're going to get to the bottom of this thing. What thing? Okay. So you're not going to believe this, honestly, without seeing it. But earlier, Eli had me pick a card right out of the entire deck and then he found it we gotta find out what's going on in his brain man right so i'm not sure the answer to how eli did that card trick is in his brain uh disagree i think it's gonna be my pine needle gland totally yeah look guys i understand that you want to be scientific but this isn't scientific not to mention, using medical equipment is a really expensive and very wasteful way to try and figure out a magic trick you think? Yeah, just look. Is this the deck of cards here? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, don't touch that. That's my cards. You can't... Look, look. They're all queen of hearts. You see? Oh. Um. Do you want to x-ray my butthole just in case? I mean, in the name of science, I feel like we should. Yes, for science. <sighs> Why do I keep coming back here? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, guys. That was a scary monster. Like, what, what? Put the stank on it, am I right? <sighs> hey, Noah, uh, what, what's up here? Oh, oh, Marsh, thank goodness you're here. Do you know how to unsubscribe somebody from Masterclass? What's Masterclass? Well, with Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to skateboard from Tony Hawk, improve your chess skills with Gary Kasparov, or learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Well, I mean, that sounds awesome. Why would you want to cancel that? Well, because the latest class is how to stream with Ninja. Oh, oh my. Thank you, Kingster343, for your subscription. Welcome to the Swizzle Stick. Pew, pew, pew. The step-by-step -step course covered everything from what equipment he needed to what software to use to how to engage and build an audience. And now he's, he's you know, that. Well, is there a masterclass on, like, stopping him only one way to find out i highly recommend you check it out get unlimited access to every masterclass and as a god awful movies listener you get 15 percent off of an annual membership go to masterclass.com slash awful now that's masterclass.com slash awful for 15 percent off masterclass all right well i mean i'll check that out and if not we could just you know put him down whoa that same monster again so scary yeah that might be best and we're back for more of this shit. And this time we're going to open up on what I believe is a real scientist. 
based on how quickly they cut him off and how we never hear from him again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. This is the guy. He comes on. He's like, it's crazy. We found this new uh, photo receptor in the eye. It's not a rod. It's not a cone. It's connected to the pineal gland. Cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like anytime someone mentions the pineal gland, it's bullshit. It's like the quantum of brain areas. It, yeah. I mean, no, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Right. Just like there are people who are talking about quantum physics that aren't full of shit, too. But yeah. Yeah. Like if you're an, an actual neuroscientist stood in front of a brain scan and you're pointing, you can talk about the pineal gland. Yeah. But if you're anything other than that, you can't. I wonder if they have to like, try to hedge their bets on it so that they don't seem like assholes to their, they're like, it's the, you know, this area right here in the brain. I'm yeah, real. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, don't make fun of me guys. You know which part I'm talking about. <laughs> and then, okay. Then Mason goes to an FDA facility in Rockville, Maryland, where we will finally meet this movie's protagonist. Fuck. Yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, there's this, uh, the scientist by the name of Diane Godar that he's, that's showing him around, right? Showing him some stuff at the FDA. And one of the things she shows him is this solar simulator light, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, hey, can I uh, turn this on and stare right into it? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of all, she's like, no, you can't because she has Boston lady voice a la Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> she totally does. So is she, every time he talks, she's like, well, that would be fucking stupid, wouldn't it? Uh, she's, she's so brilliant. She's so brilliant because he's like, so this little box is more dangerous than the sun? And she's like, yes. And he's like, but it's so little. It's like, right, Mason, but you can see how you've got your hand on the box and you can't put your hand on the sun. <laughs> and that, that difference might be why this is more dangerous. It's the distance thing. <laughs> Right. And she's like, and there's this great moment. As, and we've seen this with a couple of people already in this movie, but never as spectacularly as this lady, where she's slowly realizing just what kind of bat shittery that she has stumbled into. <laughs> oh, when he tells her she doesn't have to eat or the, the interviewer tells her they don't have to eat. And she's like, you fucking fucks don't think you have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. What do you eat? <laughs> oh, uh, she she had one of the moments in this uh, movie that made me laugh out loud. There's maybe two or three moments that really, really did. And she had the line for it because Mason said, well, how about staring at the sun? And she said, well, not during daylight hours. Yes! I thought, oh, that's yes! an incredible answer. Please have the rest of the film be Mason trying to stare at the sun at night. Please let that be the rest of it. <laughs> Just running he's, towards the horizon. I saw it go that way. I'll get you. He's staring at the ground. He's like, it should be right about. <laughs> Do the math here. No, I, I should point out we're 27 minutes into this documentary. This is the first time that somebody has just been like, yeah, but that's fucking impossible, though. He has to be <laughs> lying to you. No, don't do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, what's so funny is that she's just like, they're like, so should you stare into the sun? And she's like, nope, that's so fucking dumb. I'm not even going to address it. I'm going to talk about sunscreen. I'm going to use my time for something useful. <laughs> yes. And this lady was so ready with her sunscreen facts, yeah. right? They, they're they very clearly in the pre-interview. She was like, and I can fucking talk about sunscreen if you want me to. And they were like, yeah, no, it's this is about the sun. She was like, oh, fuck yeah. All right. So here's the thing about sunscreen. And they're just like, we're cutting all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to hope it was like 25 minutes of her giving detailed advice on how to avoid sunburn. And they're like, yeah, we'll get maybe 15 seconds out of that. Yeah, too. Right, the right. rest is cut room floor. So then we go off to meet forensic psychiatrist John Cannell. That's a bullshit job, right? Forensic psychiatrist. Yeah. That sounds like a bullshit Certainly job. Certainly his version of it 100% is. Yeah, yeah. And his opening line is incredible, right? He goes, I've often suspected conspiracy, but it's almost always incompetence. And I'm like, I bet you think it's somebody else's incompetence, though, don't you? <laughs> John's interview was fun because he walked the line the closest of all the crazy people of like, am I a crazy person? Am I saying a normal thing? Mm. Am I crazy person? <laughs> yes, he, he strung you along for quite a while, didn't he? He's he's playing the game, crazy or caught mind. He knows yeah. he's in the game and he's trying to make as much of a game of it as possible. Yeah. yeah, but it is it is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. The end. Yeah. Eventually, he starts <laughs> talking about how you should mega dose on vitamin C by waving your dick at the sun or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because why would your body make all that vitamin D if that's not how much you're supposed to have? I wrote in my notes: if you're not just supposed to drink your pee, how come you make so much delicious, delicious pee every single day? <laughs> <laughs> also, they have the camera like. Bizar like he's bizarrely way over to the right on the screen as though 
the camera's trying to edge out of the room to get out of this conversation. Oh, it's not the only time we'll see the cameraman do that kind of uh, framing. We'll ha- we'll come to a bit later. Oh, with HRM, yeah. Yeah, I'm not percent sure that the cameraman was falling asleep. We'll get to that. We'll get there. All right. And so then we're going to meet either one of Mason's heroes <laughs> or Eli trying to make up a gangster name for an improv <laughs> skit, Vinny Pinto. Vinny Pinto, who, spoiler alert, is not an anthropomorphic bean mascot, so... <laughs> Yeah. No, he's tall Wallace Shawn. It's really weird. He is Wallace Shawn. He absolutely is Wallace Shawn. And and I love the fact that Mason goes to find him because he's like, you know, I'm, I'm finding it really hard not to eat. But so I'm, I want to try and find the person who's been doing this for longer than me. And I can't find anyone. And I thought that should be way more of a, a red flag than, uh, <laughs> than it actually is. If, if you're the person who's been doing your thing the longest, you should be way more sure than you are, Mason. Right. But no, it's fine. Vinny Pinto is definitely the expert he's been looking for. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. Especially since we meet him and it turns out he's got four guinea hens that he, he calls them all Polly because he can't tell the difference between each of them. This is the expert you're looking for. Yeah, we watched this guy feed livestock for so fucking long. And then and then we see he does it. He fucks this sun staring. He doesn't even stare barefooted, guys. He's doing this yeah. terribly. He's very obviously a crazy dabbler, right? Like we follow Vinny <laughs> around his house. and He's like, yeah, I stare at the sun sometimes. Here's my metronome. Here's some raw beef I eat, which I cover in raw beef juice. <laughs> oh, God, his diet is incredible. He, he said it, I eat a strictly paleo diet. I only eat what our ancestors would have eaten a million years ago. And I prepare it in an electric blender. Oh, right. Vinny. <laughs> Vinny, yes. Vinny, Vinny. As he's saying that, he's blending his and not like a fucking Ankylosaurus based Flintstones blender no, here no. or anything. The blender does not turn to us and go, Rock, it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying it's what our ancestors would have eaten a million years ago. And even if you quibble at that number by at least one order of magnitude, the domestication of the cow was only 10,000 years ago. So they <laughs> wouldn't have been on raw beef right. at that point. <laughs> he has this bowl, cereal bowl. When he pours this fucking horrible raw sauce on top of my mm. oh. notes. This must be what Noah and he feel like when I send them pictures of my vegan <laughs> cooking. <laughs> it is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen slopped into a bowl. And slopped is the only adjective that applies to this. Yes. So and what's amazing is as he's sitting there eating ground raw beef with what <laughs> looks like cow diarrhea poured over the top of it, he goes... Yes, HRM stuff. That's nonsense, though, right? That's yeah. just silly. Fucking crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I love it so much. He's like, yeah, but your thing about not having to eat, that's just stupid, isn't it? And there's a lovely moment while we're introduced to Vinny. We also get shots of another person that we're going to meet later, and it flashes up on screen. Project X. I don't know yeah. if you guys saw that. And I thought, wow, are we going to find out that Wolverine is a sun gazer? Is, is this <laughs> how he heals so fast? It all makes sense. <laughs> oh. But so, yeah, and they go they go to drive away and everything. And the filmmaker is like, so is there any anything about the guy who was eating raw blended cow shit telling you that <laughs> your thing is stupid that um, that you want to reflect on on camera now? And he's like, no, no, it's not. It's not. Nope. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> There's this fucking incredible (laughs) moment that happens in every Wu documentary we watch and also every conversation I've ever watched a Christian try to have with Noah where they're just like, no, no. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Reject what has happened. I'm here. Well, and, and now here we are 33 minutes into the movie and the movie starts to grow a little bit of skepticism and we start getting hints that maybe HRM isn't all he claims to be. Mm-hmm. We get a, a letter from HRM's bitter ex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're sort of getting an HRM like hashtag me me too story, like yeah. hashtag me woo, I think is what we're getting <laughs> here. From a victim whose pseudonym is Sonny, which is way too on the yeah. nose. I mean, come mm-hmm. on. If she was accusing him of being a peeping Tom, it would have been a little bit better, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and, and so then they go to like HRM again, the, the, the filmmakers, and they're like, so uh, tell us more about how much money you make by claiming that you've never eaten. Right. He starts listing all of the cities that he's going to go to on his on his I don't eat tour. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not it's not like good. 
right? It's like county fair level tour. It's oh like, yeah, uh, uh, we'll go to Ontario, and then there's a town outside of Ontario, and then there's a there's a county fair. I have a booth. Well, I'm sharing a booth with a, 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 a dried <laughs> a berry point. stand. Yeah, very clever needle points. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and this is where the cameraman starts. The camera very visibly is swaying backwards and forwards, like the cameraman is just about to fall asleep listening to HRM talk at this point. Mm. And then he burps in our face. He does. Why do we need to watch him burp? Hey, what the fuck was that? I want to be very clear about what happens. He's doing his spiel. I only take coffee or tea or buttermilk, and then he goes. Ugh. Well, it's not even that. He says he does only takes coffee, tea, or buttermilk. We pause for like nine <laughs> seconds, and then mm. he burps in our face, and we're like, why did we do that? <laughs> but then the camera people start staking him out to see if he really eats or not. Yeah. 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 We're, we're on a steak out. We, if we watch him eat some of Vinny's beef, it'll be a steak out. Oh, nice. Be, uh, well done. Nice. <laughs> and also, like, why stake him out? Right, like he could prove he's not a liar just by letting you follow him around for a few days. He chose not to do that. We already know, mm. right? Yeah. But he goes to McDonald's and they're like, uh, uh, is he eating? No, it's just coffee with cream and sugar. But, but fun fact, sugar is a solid food. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> sure the fuck is. Oh, and then just in case you're not depressed enough, we see an 11 year old chiming in on the Yahoo <sighs> sun gazing group to talk about how oh. much she likes not eating anymore. But she won't tell anybody about it because yes. this is the only supportive place she can find on the internet. Oh. Yeah, like there are zero other explanations for why a tween girl would be looking to avoid eating, given mm -hmm. how they're essentially the most primary at-risk group for eating disorders. So it's got to just be that the sun gazing thing works. It can't be anything else. Good oh, God. So terrible. The terrifying. child abuse portion of this documentary. Yeah. yeah, look, I know that there are a lot of people who like found their communities on the internet and it really helped them and stuff. But there does need to be a button that you can install where you just push it and it's like, bullshit and the kid's like oh okay thanks yeah that'd be nice uh so okay and speaking of bullshit time for us to meet our next sun gazer i love this guy right the little skinny black dude that's the bodybuilder guy yes right or the weightlifter i yeah, guess this guy's great he's not a bodybuilder he's a weightlifter he's a, so we go out to utah to the middle of this fucking desert we meet this guy named brooks right and he explains to us that he never did care much for this whole eating thing and never really saw the point Normal, healthy, not a mental illness. <laughs> well, there's so much to Brooks that is that is worrying. First of all, when we meet him, he's sun gazing on top of his roof. And he's not the first person we see on top of their roof sun gazing. Yep. And you know, you don't have to be on top. Nope. The sun can find you anywhere you're not in the shade. <laughs> it's, it's not that the sun is better when you're 10 to 15 feet off the floor. It's, it's the same sun. Well, you're closer to the sun, though. <laughs> and he even says, Brooks says, and this is, this is so telling, he says... I've got so much energy that nobody could live with me. My nearest neighbor has to be several miles away. And I thought, hmm, it feels like there's a story to that. Yeah, yeah there's right. a story behind that. I'm too awesome is yep, why I can't. That's the problem. I'm 67 and I've been staring at the sun. He says, I'm, I'm 67 and I've been gazing at the sun for a long time. Yeah. So that's an un <laughs> yes. underwhelming fact, mate. Put a number in there or don't say it. But then we he go, climbs up on his fucking roof and we see that no the fuck he hasn't because he is probably the most like I've never done this before and now that the camera's <laughs> on I can't admit that. This guy is just crying. Mm. Yep. He, it's, it's so awful. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is very clearly a gentleman who Likes attention, mm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Far be it from me, a podcaster, to <laughs> criticize. I'm this, the magician. <laughs> exactly. This gentleman's <laughs> motivations. But like, of all the bullshitters in this movie, he's the one who was like, oh, yeah, I love sun gazing. I do it all the time. How often do you do it for? Seven hours? Nope. <laughs> Four <laughs> years? Nope. <laughs> Will you please come to my house with the camera? He also says he doesn't avoid eating because he needs to lower his frequencies by eating because if he didn't eat, it would increase his frequencies too high. So his argument is the reason he eats is because if he didn't eat, he'd be too healthy. That is yes. what he's arguing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so no, he actually uses the words too healthy. Here's the actual, yeah. I had to write this quote down. This is amazing. He says, it's almost like for me, it's necessary not to be too healthy because otherwise I wouldn't be able to go out and be anywhere. <laughs> and, and you can see how that would be inconvenient. The inability <laughs> to exist corporally in the universe. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we, I cannot 
fucking believe this next part happens. Yes. So he shows us these newspaper clippings of when he was young. And the mm. newspaper clippings are like, this guy is super skinny, but he can lift a lot of weight. And he's like, that's right. I can lift 1,100 pounds. And I'm like, you sure fucking couldn't. <laughs> and then we go to a gym. Uh. So this 67 year old guy can show up. And he's, let me say, he's every bit as good at lifting this weight as he was at staring into the sun. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, oh. When we went to the gym, I was like, oh, we're going to watch a man die. Yeah. <laughs> This is a 67-year-old man who just made a claim that he could squat 1,000 pounds. <laughs> oh, and he's so good. He's so good because he said, first of all, he can't stop lying. He's already given us the, I only sleep one to seven hours a week. Yes. Excellent lie. Mm -hmm. Now he's given us, I never, ever exercise. And to prove that, he does some <laughs> genuinely, comically, unconvincingly bad stretches to prove that he doesn't know what he's doing. He clearly does exercise. Like he saw Daffy Duck warm up <laughs> yeah. once. He's, he's not like, like, oh, do I like, uh, is it like a, uh, I think, do I do that? And he's looking at the camera awkwardly like, do, do my arms go down here when I do this? Yeah. He's playing chicken. He's playing chicken with the camera, right? The, yep. Someone behind the camera was like, oh, you can lift a thousand pounds. Let's go to a gym and do it. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's do it right now. And the camera was like, cool. You're afraid. To do Here it. we are. <laughs> when he lifts the weights, they put more and more weight on the side. He goes under. Now, the, the weights are already at shoulder height or just below yep. shoulder height, mm -hmm. which is an unusual position to lift weights from, I believe. I'm no expert. But the way he lifts the weights is he stands his entire frame, his entire back underneath the weights, yep. slightly hunched over, and he lifts them by standing up with the weights on the back of his neck, yes. lifted via the spine, and I don't know that that's a good way of lifting weights, carrying the weight entirely on your spine. To say that he squunches the weights is a <laughs> lot more accurate than that he lifts the weights. Well, it's, right, because yeah. he gets it like, maybe... And I'm being generous when I say this, an inch off the rack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, that's as much as I'm going to do. And then he drops it back down and he goes, and that wasn't a demonstration so much as um, just, you know, a proof. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. It's like he, he can't manage to lift it properly. And I thought, right, quick, someone shine a laser in his eye. He'll do this. He'll do this. Come on. <laughs> They open up the, the shades and they're like, bah, 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 yeah, no, I wrote my notes. Is that a sick? That's a failure, right? He failed. No. And mm. Yeah, he failed. So, and he also looks like he pulled something because he's like holding his side yep. after yeah. he's done. And I think he stopped because he pulled something. Absolutely. <laughs> he put, by the way, it wasn't a thousand pounds. They started to put a thousand pounds and he was like, come on, you'll kill me. I'll literally so like, do 500. <laughs> I'm old now. I can only yeah, do a 67 year old crazy person was like Hah! against a solid metal <laughs> bar. And he was like, please leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and, then they, and then they leave. And of course, Mason has to stop and stare at the sun for a while before they before they can go on. And there's this great moment where the documentarian is like, so uh, how you feeling after that sun gazing session? He's like, well, you know, I've got a unique sensation in the back of my head. Pretty sure that's a good thing, though. <laughs> yeah, that yep. can only be positive. Don't worry about that. <laughs> head is good. <laughs> but then, so we, we cut back to the Yahoo group for somebody to finally be like, Hey guys, I tried this staring into the sun shit and it fucked my eyes all up. Just like every expert who's ever looked into this said it would. What the fuck? Does anyone know why I got injured from staring into the sun? No. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Nobody knows why. <laughs> but yeah, but that prompts Mason to go to an ophthalmologist and check to see if he also has maybe fucked up his vision. Well, ah, I hate to argue. Not an ophthalmologist. He goes to one of those play centers for children and a nine-year-old in a lab coat. She's <laughs> so young. She is so young. Well, so uh, so th this is the assistant, not the ophthalmologist. But yeah, yes. she, she looks <laughs> right. like she's about 19. It's still child labor at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so fucking, it's so amazing because she sits down. She's like, okay, so we're going to do your eye. She talks exactly like my younger sister. And she's like, yeah. okay, so we're like totally going to do your eyes. Can you read the line for me? And he's like, I stared at the sun for 44 minutes yesterday. And she's like, doubt thou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Also, I want to point out, because this is going to be important later, that when he's reading the thing, he can't read shit that's right in the center of his vision. Yeah, no, he can't. He misses the letter G. Yeah, right. absolutely. I noticed that as yep. well. It's the largest line. It's yep. literally the like, hey, just to make sure you're not fucking blind, will you read that? And he's like, nerf. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, it's the E. Yeah. So and 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 then she goes. She's like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have to check this thing of your pressure in your eye." And he's like, "Oh, are you gonna put some kind of weird medicine, some chemicals in my eye?" And she's like, "You just told me you stare into the fucking sun. You're negative qualified to offer an opinion on this, dude. So. Yeah. You're putting poison in my eyes, like to kill me." <laughs> and he makes a big deal of having those anesthetic drops in his eyes. And look, I've had those. It's fine. You, Mason, if you really want something freaky, try letting them cut your corneas with a laser. That's an <laughs> odd eye sensation. Oh, he's doing that with the sun, man. He doesn't. That is true. That is true. He's just taking it much slower. <laughs> yeah, he gets the drops, and like, look, no one likes those drops. But he's like, oh, my eyes feel terrible. Uh, I guess if we find out anything's wrong with my eyes, it's probably from this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> totally does too. <laughs> And then the actual doctor comes in and this is this another great like because she can't she's a doctor. She's his mm. doctor. So she can't just go, wow, you're fucking nuts. Right. Yeah. At any point. So she just has to like keep looking at her. She's filling out forms that with just she's coloring in the O's and the E's. and she's <laughs> like going, there's mm-hmm. a fucking box for staring into the sun for 40 <laughs> minutes a day. <laughs> yes. uh, and there are things that this the, the exchanges between Mason and the doctor here are some of my favorite things. One of them is the, the thing that made me laugh out loud sort of second most maybe this entire movie. But there's a bit where she says, you know, are you experiencing any visual damage? And he says, no, arguably I'm seeing more colors. Yes. So that. That doesn't sound like a good thing. If you're seeing colors no. that aren't there, <laughs> that's visual damage. I'm actually making friends, those little squiggly things that never go away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing goats on my couch, lady. I'm seeing all kind of shit. Yeah. And in the second best moment of this interview, we'll get to the best moment of the mm. interview in a second. In the second best moment of the interview, she's like, hey, um, why? Why are you doing this? And he's like, ha, ha, ha. Great question. Right? I don't know. <laughs> Why would I do that? And then they take him to like, I feel like it's some like off-site facility they have for nutters, right? They take him into the back and suddenly they've got all these gigantic eye machines that I've never seen before. Mm. Yeah. I, I thought it was just going to be that machine that that they used to like poof air, air into your eye just to fuck with you. I don't think it's got any purpose other than just to fuck with you. Just to That's certainly just, eye. yeah, absolutely. That's just because it's yeah, This is the next level of the poof machine. <laughs> I also thought, is this whole documentary just a way for Mason to get to see an ophthalmologist without having any health insurance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to America. It's like, yeah, the American healthcare system is real yeah, bad. Well, You've got to stare at the sun in order to get anywhere near <laughs> an eye doctor. Yeah. So, yeah, so they do all of these tests. There's this other doctor there, and he's looking at these. I, I don't even know what. It's not x-rays, but I don't know what the fuck they are. But he's looking at these images of his eyes, and he's like, yeah, man, um, there's a terrible, terrible burn on the mm. back of your retina. There's this huge, long pause, and Mason goes, is it, is it from the sun gazing, you think? And there's no pause at all, and the doctor's like, yeah, man. <laughs> well, I, I wrote this down because this, this was... One of the highlights, this is the second funniest moment in the entire movie for me. He says, the doctor's like, you've got a massive burn on your eye. And Mason says, is there any chance that that was already there? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's not, Mason. <laughs> I don't know, man. Do you ever dip Ooh. your eyes into a frying pan? No. <laughs> then I think it's the sun staring. <laughs> Imagine that guy's dead. Ima- you're an ophthalmologist. You spend your whole fucking life being like, Here's some glasses, use some surgery. Oh, you're Tim. It sucks to be you. And then this <laughs> asshole walks in and he's like, so what do you think that burn in the back of my eyes is from? <laughs> and you're not allowed to punch him in the balls. <laughs> oh, just... And then, then when we sit down and hear from the doctor, the doctor's like, yeah, so basically his eyes are fucked. And if he isn't experiencing any symptoms, it's because he's massively in denial. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me in your documentary. Well, and they specifically explained that he's going to lose the middle field of his vision, which he could yeah. say, she, it says his fucking retinal pigment epithelials has been completely burned away, whatever the fuck that means. But she just gives this long list of like, yeah, his eyes are all the way fucked, right? Yeah. So then we cut to, it's the next day. Mason is just crushed. He's sitting in a wooden chair in the middle of the desert, apparently. In the middle of, the, of a road in the desert. Like, yeah. The best place to have a, I've been taking too many risks with my health conversation <laughs> is sat on a chair in the middle of a road. <laughs> like, we've learned nothing, Mason. He goes, a piece of me died when she gave me those results. I was like, was it your retinal pigment epithelial? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking oof. <laughs> 
he's having this this like existential crisis where he's like, it turns out that everybody who's an expert in any way was right. How could I have seen that coming? I'm like, well, without retinal pigment epithelials, I have no idea how you can see that coming. <laughs> There's a sad, not staring into the fucking sun montage. <laughs> He's yes. driving. He's driving, and we watch him have a hard time keeping his eyes off the sun. Yeah. And he <laughs> He's driving around as though the sun just broke up with them. Oh, God. There it is. There it is. <gasps> be strong, Mason. <laughs> this is going to be so awkward. <laughs> his his take-home message for this whole thing is, I need to promote this a different way because it can hurt your eyes. That, that's not the take home message no. is do it, but beware <laughs> it's going to burn your eyes. It's don't do it, dickhead. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly Mason needs a minute to weeply listen to Here Comes the Sun in a minor key or something. So we're going to take another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Are we just fucking with you? Does this movie even really exist? Did we record this one on April Fool's Day? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the literally blindingly stupid conclusion of Eat the Sun. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm 14 years old, and I was wondering if anyone on this website has tried sun gazing. Thanks for your help. Smiley face. And sent. Oh, wow. Two replies from kids my age already. Three! Uh, 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 not so fast. Yeah, hold up. Well, who are you guys? I'm skeptic of the millennia, Michael Marshall. And I'm American Atheist Game Night host, No Illusions. Yours sounds less impressive. Well, we can't all give ourselves awards once a year. Anyway, we're part of a brand new service called NetBreaker. What's NetBreaker? NetBreaker is a web filtering service that allows you to see who's actually sending you messages. Let's take a look at those messages from fellow teens again. Hey. I'm a mentally ill 50-year-old man. Pretending to be young and interacting with children is how I placate my deeply troubled psyche, and I literally don't care who I hurt while I do it. I'm a white supremacist hoping to use your youthful gullibility to red pill you into my beliefs. And I'm an FBI agent posing as a teen to catch pedophiles. But I'm also a white supremacist, though. Oh, wow. So uh, have any of you actually tried sun gazing? They sure haven't. My mental illness and personal experiences have biased me against Western medicine, so I've actually convinced myself I'm helping people by lying about it on the internet. Oh, okay, so what do I do if I want to find information or, or share experiences with my peers? Well, there's lots of informative sources on the internet, like Wikipedia and other peer-reviewed sources of information. And when it comes to talking to peers, you should really try to stick to doing that in person. In person? But that's scary. Tell me about it. Stick with us, kid. We'll pretend to understand you no matter what you say or feel. Have you ever heard of white replacement theory? Um, you know what? I think I'm going to stick to talking to other kids that I can, you know, see. You're lost. I'm in the peak of health and I can lift a thousand pounds. Really? No. Nope. Okay. Dude, for the last time. I am Ella. Hey, guys, what's all this racket? Oh, hey, Marsh, it's Eli. He won't stop brushing with his new smart brush from Quip. What's Quip? Good health starts with good habits. Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials that you're going to need to care for your mouth. The Quip electric toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths and has time sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide a dentist-recommended two-minute clean, a lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky chargers to weigh you down. Right, and Eli won't stop brushing because... Well, on top of your brushing, you can upgrade your Quip with a new smart motor to track and improve your brushing with free Quip app and earn amazing rewards like free refills, products, Target gift cards, and more. Woo, I score! He's been at it like for an hour and a half now. Right, got it. Yeah, I see. So does Quip only sell toothbrushes? No way. They've got a reusable floss pack that replaces over 180 disposable picks with every refill and refillable gum that's sugar-free, has long-lasting mint flavor, and comes with a dispenser. All right, well, I might not know how to stop Eli, but I'm in. Where do I sign up? If you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill for free. That's your first refill for free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip. The Good Habits Company. Oh, wrecker! Wow, his gums are bleeding a lot. Yeah, he knows. I oh, wrecker! 
And we're back for more of this shit. And just in case you didn't think there was a higher gear of crazy to shift into, we're now going to go up to Nevada for what appears to be some Catholic sun staring ceremony of some sort. Yes. Yeah, this is great. This is essentially bored, largely middle class, largely white people having a pseudo spiritual experience in the desert. It's like, guys, just take up swinging. It's fine. We won't judge you. (laughs) No one's going to judge you. Just take up swinging. Okay, I'm remembering you said that at QED. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I'm like, hey, look, it's the hippie Pope. But it turns out this guy, this is Gene Savoy. This is Gene Savoy. Yeah. Yeah, this is the guy who runs Project X. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about him briefly earlier. Apparently, he was the proto-Indiana Jones, according to somebody who was not Steven Spielberg or George Lucas. (laughs) Oh, and God, is there anything better than watching people set up for a magic ceremony? Right. Because there's this great thing where like Larry does have to set up the magic bells. So he's just like, ah, fuck, they're in the case. Let me get it. <laughs> Sorry. That's, yeah, that's yeah. not magic. That's just me dropping it. Yeah. Well, while they're all dressed like space Catholics and right. Gene Savoy is very clearly wearing woolen mittens, like white woolen mittens yeah. in the middle mm-hmm. of the desert. It's a, it's a look. It's a real look. Oh, and I sh- we should point out, too, that the bell that Eli's talking about is comically oversized. Oh, my God, guy with the giant bell is the best because everyone's mad at him every time he brings it. Right? <laughs> Everyone else has, like, a normal bell. And then fucking <laughs> Bell Senior has to be like, Bagong! and everyone's like, really, Jerry, right in my ear. Right you in my you had to bring ear. one the size of the fucking <laughs> trash can in my bathroom again, didn't you? <laughs> The, the thing about Gene Savoy with this this weird cult they had, I looked Gene Savoy up and Gene Savoy actually died on September 11th, 2007. Oh. You see, you have to add the year <laughs> when you say that date. You do. It's... <laughs> but yeah, but they're apparently sun starers as well. They don't do the not eating thing. No. <laughs> but we learned that they've, they've been staring into the sun for quite some time. We also meet his sons, who I have down as the Tweedledee and Tweedledum of sun gazing. Fat. Ben Shapiro. Yeah, so I had one of them. One of them is definitely Fadget Ben Shapiro. Yep. The other one is Chris Parnell, dressed as Jonathan Jerry, which yeah. I thought was a nice kind of uh, crossover. There. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I call the other one Ben Sharp Cheddar. Okay. The, uh... Nice. <laughs> he goes. Uh, yeah, you know, if you think about it, we were actually sun gazing before we were even born because our parents were staring at the sun back then. I'm like, fucking what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess you were also fucking your mother before you were born too, weren't you? <laughs> uh, we also find out that the, the Christian church changed when Rome outlawed looking at the sun. What? And I'd love to see how Rome enforced that law. In Rome, <laughs> in Rome of all places. They inv- Did you just look at the sun? No, it was a bird. I swear it was a bird. <laughs> it was a plane. It was... <laughs> so- <laughs> yeah, and then Gene tells us that the only way to truly understand Jesus is to stare into the sun. (laughs) And that the real message of Jesus is to stare into the sun. And I wrote in my notes, honestly, better than Jesus' actual message. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God, this woman comes up and she says, no, it it is scientific, though. The whole process is scientific. And I'm like, well, yeah, guys, why would they put Democratic Republic of in the name if it wasn't a Democratic (laughs) Republic? Obviously. it's It's, It's also where we find out that the techniques they use to stare at the sun are fundamental as well as advanced what so like th- what i'm doing is both fundamental and advanced that's that's all of the levels at once at this point <laughs> yeah. it's quantum you wouldn't understand it's it involves the pineal <laughs> gland you don't but yeah and and she says this is an, again an actual quote she says it's scientific in the sense that the more energy you can take into your system the more you have to learn how to decode it that's the kind of wisdom we're getting from this film. In response to that, I wrote, it's scientific in that that's not a legally protected term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting things. There's, the other thing he said, which is lovely, he says the physical sun is a gateway to another sun. Yeah. And I was like, right, and is is that sun a gateway to yet another sun? Is this like one of those Matryoshka doll <laughs> situations? <laughs> <laughs> or do you think that the, there's another sun behind the sun, but you have to use the physical sun to get to this advanced sun that's advanced, but also somehow fundamental? Is right. that what's yes, going on? That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have to check back in with Mason, right? He's he's still kind of sad about the stuff not working out between him and the sun. So and, and apparently he's moved to Hawaii in the interim. 
oh my God, he's telling us, he's like, oh, what a journey. So important. So amazing. And I, I'm just like, I would honestly prefer someone tell me about how their time abroad changed their life at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Also, he's cut his hair short and he's shaved. And I am fairly sure the length of his hair is a is a very visual representation of the state of his mental health. Yep. Like the, the shorter he is, the more he's like, oh yeah, no, Mason sound like he's in a good place now. He's rationalized himself back in. He's got a crew cut. We're all good again. Yeah. It's a, I, the, the metric that I used was the length of his sideburns. Sure. Yes. Right. How yep. low yep. do the sideburns, they go lower and lower the nuttier he gets. Yeah, they were goggles early in the movie, so we know he's in a better place now. Yeah. <laughs> and what's very clear about this is like Mason understands it's bad for him and he wants to stop. But Mason doesn't want to say in it into a camera, sun gazing is bad. I was wrong. I wasted my time. Yes. I need hmm. mental health care. Well, and the other thing he doesn't want to say is, and I hurt people really bad along the way. Right. So instead, he's acting like, yeah, I mean, I could tap into the limitless human potential and be a foodless god of spirituality. But <laughs> not if I'm going to burn my epithelial whatever. Yeah. I don't yeah. wanna. I, it's not <laughs> that I don't wanna. I just am not. Stop filming. <laughs> <laughs> he also says, you know, we'll see when I get to a stable place or whether I make that firm decision to get off the fence. And I thought, oh, that's... That's not the kind of thing an emotionally healthy person in a good place says. Nope. Really. No, mm -hmm. I've literally never not followed that sentence with you guys should break up. You really <laughs> should break up. <laughs> and then so now we're going to meet Jacob Lieberman, who I have his profession down as I bullshit ist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's the qu he's the quickest that you win the crazier quote mind game with. I yeah. think. Yes. Uh, he, he was an optometrist up until 1976 at which point he believes his eyes were miraculously healed. And then this film is 35 years later. So he's 35 years on from that point, 35 years deeper into stuff. Yes. Uh -huh. And he's not buying this whole looking directly into the sun is a bad thing claim. Yeah, because did you know every two hours you get new blood in your eyes? Eyes. Yes. A hundred percent of your new blood volume is pumped through your eyes. <laughs> Not quite sure what he means by that. And then he also says, you know, <laughs> he goes even further. Without light, no matter how much organic food you eat, it'll just go in one end and out the other. Because he thinks that food needs to interact with light inside of your eyes in order for it to work as food. Also, it's supposed to come out the other end, right? Yeah, like that's, that's how that's the, the goal. <laughs> right. Oh, and also he does this whole like whole no true Scotsman thing on starving people. He's like, look, if you believe that you have to eat, then you're going to have to eat. But if you're tr a true Scotsman, <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to go without food. And I, he he's not full of shit because he did an experiment where he didn't eat for nine weeks. No, he didn't. And he <laughs> learned he could go eight days without drinking. No, he can't. <laughs> and he never needs to eat again. No. <laughs> And the fun thing is, this interview is 17 years after he did that. And I thought, I wonder if anyone is going to ask him whether he currently eats or drinks. No, they won't yeah. do that because the answer is really obvious. Yeah. Uh huh. So weird that places in perpetual famine never took up this whole not eating thing. It's so crazy. Yeah. Loads of places are very sunny. They had a lot yeah. of access right. to the sun. Yeah. And I got to say, there is nothing I love more than an incompetent con man of this kind of deepity woo, right? Like you never really appreciate Deepak Chopra until you hear this guy say, <laughs> and look, nothing changes and everything changes <laughs> and all the medium things. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then we check back in on Mason's blog and it, it turns out that he's decided at 3.30 a.m. on August of 2000, in August of 2004, that he's going to stare at the sun after all. Yeah, I do my best thinking at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> he's back, baby. My mental illness has no power at 3.30 a.m., let me tell you. <laughs> he's walking us up the hill to, like, his his triumphant sun-gazing return, and he's mm -hmm. like, you see those white things up there? And I wanted so badly for it to pan up, and there was nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Yeah, I'm going to be walking up towards that big black spot right in the middle of the hill. <laughs> so you guys can see that squiggly right? line that's always immediately to the right of whatever you're looking at. I'm going towards it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and then we watch him look at the sun for a fucking while. Oh, God. A while. Uh, Mason goes to meet with Gene Savoy and fucking Tweedledee, not Fat Ben Shapiro. Yes. I love because the guy's trying to explain their theology without making a direct Star Wars reference, but he's not pulling that off at all. Yeah. No, yeah. He's the, the, the Gene's son has all the mannerisms of someone who's trying to persuade Mason to jump off the highest diving board, knowing full well that the pool is empty. That is the vibe <laughs> I'm getting from him. Yes. Also, where we are so far at this point is Mason said, I'm able to, I've been able to look at the sun for 42 minutes, 50 seconds. And today I'm going to go for 44 minutes. So, right, but the climax of this film can't surely be Mason looking at the sun for 2% longer than he's previously been able to. That's not a big finale. Oh, but it is. <laughs> but it is. 50 seconds of sun staring screen time, my mm. friend. Oh, I'm sorry, Eli. It was significantly more than that. It was a minute plus, or almost, almost two full yeah, minutes. Two, I had two minutes down. Yeah, almost two full minutes. I skipped through it and then went, hang on, how long was that? And then skipped back to, to see how long it actually was. But yeah, yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. I watched this one. I did not skip through it. And my literally my only note at this point was, hey, Marsh, I, I know that this is like, what? My level of intellect is meant for, but I'm sorry we do this to you. <laughs> I'm sorry you watched two minutes of a guy being like, ow. ow. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It turns out I skipped it, so we're all yeah, good. There you okay, go. yeah, no, we made <laughs> it. Oh, God, I wrote in my notes, are we going to watch the whole 44 minutes? I feel like we're going to watch the whole 44 minutes, guys. Mm. Uh, we don't, though. He, he makes it. 44 minutes, hooray. And then we go back to staking out HRM. Now, as you'll recall, we did see him going to a McDonald's, but damn it if he didn't just get coffee. But this time, they catch him going into an Indian restaurant and having a big ass bowl of food. <laughs> oh my god! This, this is the best payoff. This is the best moment of the the whole documentary. They actually ca catch him having a curry. Fucking amazing! I, yep. How hard is it to just not go to restaurants? Right? Yeah. Right. Like all it takes is for him to have food in the back office of his bullshit fucking place that he carries in in some fucking container or whatever every day. That's all it would take. The commitment to not go to a fucking restaurant. And he does not even have that. Not go to a restaurant the week the camera crew is there. Yeah, exactly. Just just go a couple of days where you're you know existing on the minimal amount. I'm sure when Randy talked about uh, doing tests on uh, on people who claimed they were they weren't eating, the way they were getting around it was they had like a a, a friend who was like pushing burgers through a small a small slit in the window when no one was looking, and they were eating them quietly in the toilet. And these days, no, he's just strolling around town on TripAdvisor or Yelp, finding the best Indian restaurant yeah. and wandering into the buffet, leaving reviews five. Five stars, ate so much food, <laughs> love it. He's not even wearing Clark Kent glasses when he does no. it. It's amazing. Mm -mm. And we should also point out again, this guy has wizard beard sideburns. He's he, like intentionally the weirdest looking person in any room, right? Yeah. yeah. He's also got posters of himself all over town as yep. the I don't eat food <laughs> yes. guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So we're going to get back to that. We're going to come back to that in a minute. They're going to give us a second to process that. But first, we're going to go back to Mason, who is having such a good go of it that he's moving back in with his mom, guys. That's how <laughs> high on life he is. Oh, my God. At this, at this point, I realized, like, we could have saved Mason literally by just showing him the movie Soul. Like, literally one viewing of a movie, like, oh, I don't need to have a, a big magical purpose. Yep. Tight. Tight, tight, tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do also see him learning the piano, and I thought, I hope he's going to claim that playing a certain chord will give him immortality. <laughs> and we're going to see him go on that journey next. Honestly, though, but like, if you consider that, how weird it is that that would be an improvement over where he is. It gives you a really good indication of where we're at right now. I mean, God, the improvement over where he is is that he he gets an acupuncture qualification and opens a wellness center oh, in his God. hometown. That is the big hero journey. And it is an improvement on where he was. Right. Not least because it seems to have closed per permanently because I've Googled it and it's not there anymore. Yeah. Well, that's nice to know. I We see him wearing a white lab coat at one point and I'm like, that sh you shouldn't be allowed to do that. Yeah. Man. I My note is literally they legally can't stop you from buying a lab coat <laughs> this movie 
I feel like there should be a lot like that guy. Up, like if we've got video of you staring into the sun for 44 minutes, they, there should be there should be rules against that. Yeah. So, yeah, but but he's back with his family. Apparently he is eating food again, which, again, like to be clear, he was eating food the whole time. We know because he's not dead. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's just admitting it now. It's so sad. Because he's having dinner with his normal family. And he just has such a lovely little normal. Hey, slugger, how was your day at your fucking whatever the fuck you do? It's okay, dad. It's pretty good. And then mom puts like a plate of spaghetti in front of him. He's like, yummy spaghetti. (laughs) It's just so fucking tragic. (laughs) And then the producers go to confront HRM about the eating. And we get to hear... (laughs) Eli's best worst, Mm. his excuse. It's not that he was eating that food. No, no, no. No. He was paid $100 to sit in a restaurant and pretend to eat the food. (laughs) Yes. That is literally what he claimed. Uh Uh-huh. Then we flash cut because this uh, this is fucking amazing. We flash cut over to the restaurant where the guy at the restaurant's like, no, he just came in and ate some food. And he goes to the buffet and points to each dish individually. He's like, he he ate some of that, and then some of that, and then some of that, and like eight different things. But his excuse is even shitter than people might think of when you think about it further, because he said people paid him $100 to sit in front of some food pretending he was eating it. But his whole stick is that he doesn't eat. $100 $100 is such a low price to burn his entire reputation right. over. Yeah. But that's a hell of an ad for your restaurant. Like, he just couldn't resist right, right on the front. <laughs> All right. No, that's fair. But and, and, and the fucking director even says, well, you just came back. Can I see the $100? Could you show me the $100 bill you were paid? And he goes, yep, it's right here. And he reaches into my pocket in my bag and doesn't know it. <laughs> he can't even produce a hundred dollar bill for this just say no to that refuse and then he cries for a little bit say no you can't see it i'm not gonna yeah. play in your game don't say yes when you don't have it on you and you can't well, you're gonna get called on that <laughs> yeah he goes yes it's in my bag and the camera lingers on him for a second and we watch him just wipe a tear away as the <laughs> la- he's like i don't have a hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> And then we go back over to Mason's acupuncture clinic and tell him that they caught HRM eating. And again, like this guy, of course, has been eating this whole time. So he has to pretend like he's shocked. He's like, oh, my God, people claim (laughs) that they're not eating when they are. I didn't even think about that. You could do that. Whoa. He says, uh, yeah, that's uh, he's going to have to. That's for him to do deal with (laughs) because it's also a thing he's doing right yes it's a thing he's doing it's like when i don't know if you've ever had a buddy who you didn't realize his girlfriend didn't let him watch porn and then it comes out and he's like yeah she caught me watching porn and there's like consequences and you got to be like yeah (laughs) that's bad that's wow how do you feel about how she feels (laughs) I jerked off at your bathroom the other night and came back, but I mean, yeah, sorry. Sorry, your wife is mad. Oh, God. And then the credits start, and we're like, oh, is that it? But no, it's not. There's some mid-credit scenes that we get this amazing apology letter from HRM where he shamefacedly admits that, yes, he did eat a food once. Just the once. <laughs> Just so. the once. It was a one time. Was it that he was hungry? Yeah, that's that's his, I know the film is coming out. This is my attempt at damage limitation while I'm in a different country peddling the same bullshit to people who haven't seen your film yet. Right, yeah, exactly. It's signed HRM all the fucking way from Germany. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and, and then, of course, just as you're like, you know, thinking, well, at least Mason made it out fine. We close out a montage of other people at the early end of the macular scorching routine of HRMs. Oh, teenage kid with the supportive dad. Teenage kid with the supportive dad. Oh, that poor guy. His teenage kid is like, yeah, I've been Sundaysing for like four months now. And it's just some hippie dad who's like, yep, we'll see. (laughs) You can see this dad just being like, please just be gay instead. Huh? (laughs) Huh, son? You want a nice little cock or something? (laughs) Your mom and I'll join the plead flag. Please stop. Please stop making me come to this yoga studio. And there's there's the lady who says she's really looking forward to the sun caused DNA changes. And I was like, yeah, she means skin cancer. Though, doesn't she? That's what she's looking forward to at this point. Or macular degeneration, one or the other. Yeah, <laughs> burning away the epithelial pigment thing. Okay, well I'll tell you what. 
That's the end of the movie. And normally we don't do star based ratings, but for a movie all about staring into one, I'd tell you it burns the back of your fucking retina off. I feel like we can make an exception. So anybody want to offer this movie any stars? Oh, just the one big one. Okay, all right. That'll be yeah, plenty, I'll, I'm sure. I want to give it one big star, but it's the middle star. And if you look at it, you can't actually fully see it because of all the damage you've done to your eyes. So it, just, <laughs> oh. it disappears depending on how much sun gazing you've done. So I was going to give it one star, but it's the one that's behind the other. Like if you look past <laughs> the one. So yeah, we're all, we're all agreed though. It is definitely a one star movie. <laughs> <laughs> And while that's going to do it for our review of Eat the Sun, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to stare into something less pleasant than the sun again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Jenny is a committed Christian who lovingly serves patients as a hospice nurse. But when her unbelieving friend Autumn goes into hospice care, Jenny is confronted with the weakness of her own faith. We'll be watching Redemption Way. Oh, that sounds very uplifting. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to make episode 346 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all of his other stuff and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by Law Offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Biblical Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Mason realized that all that eat the sun stuff was just silly, and now he spends all his time trying to sniff the moon. <laughs> This film would go on to inspire the far more entertaining sequel, Butt Chugging the Sun. Thank you, Natalie. Mason's dad is just trying to eat his dinner, man. He's just <laughs> so tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just, I want to do a series of documentaries just like this one, just so that we can call it the macular tech. Yeah! <laughs> The only thing I used to have in Italian, I can't remember now, was uh, I'm sorry I'm too busy to speak Italian with you right now. Um, nice. Which again, it's it's not that I can't, I'm just way too busy. Right, exactly. No, that's a good one. I should learn that in all the languages. <laughs> Including um, English. I'm, I'm yeah, too right, busy to right, speak yeah. you right now. Go <laughs> away. <laughs> in case I ever meet Mason. <laughs> <coughs> all right. Speaking of which. We've met Mason a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> and the next time I meet Mason. I lived with Mason. Like, I was roommates with Mason. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christians. That not, I don't mean Heath, by the way. I just want to be super clear about that. I just have to actually I have to go back and say I was a different roommate I was talking about. <laughs> There's a little Mason in Heath. <laughs> there was... <laughs> He was tall. <laughs> All right. Here we go. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. We want students to know that if they go to Kent State, they have the world a la carte as an opportunity for them to develop a true global perspective. Arnold's auto detailing business was thriving, but his health wasn't. Until he found a Suma Health primary care physician. Now Arnold's shining again, just like his cars. Suma Health, vital for a healthier community, vital for life. Visit sumahealth.org slash primary care.